Hello. Um, hope everybody's doing really well. So I thought I would um, explain um, orchestrating, um, kind of how some of us think, and um, particularly orchestrating piano music. Um, this is going to be a really nerdy video, so I'm sorry. I know some of you might be interested. And some of you are probably like, bitch, just post some more selfies. No one cares. Um, and yes, I am wearing pajamas at 416. I am orchestrating in my pajamas because I'm that bitch. So, um, okay. So this is a sort of an art song by um, Maurice Ravel called Sur l'herbe um, on the grass. And... Um, I have been orchestrating it in French because I'm pretentious, even though I really can't speak French. I can read French, but I can't speak it. So um, I thought I would show a particular passage um, and just demonstrate what I'm doing and why I'm making certain decisions. I know this stuff is going to be hard to see on Instagram. I'll upload a YouTube video to anyone um, who's super interested and I'll do my best to zoom in. So this is the original piano passage. Um, you'll see that there's a few different planes of tone or, or different layers. So there's a melody happening here that's going downwards and there's arpeggiation that's going upwards and a bass line. So you sort of have something moving down and something going up and um, it's piano so we know it's quiet uh, du pedal so like meaning the soft pedal on the piano right here so everything about this is telling us it's quiet and there's a few different um, layers happening and that should be reflected in the orchestra so this is some crappy playback speaker um, sounds so it's obviously not realistic but I'll just play you this passage so you can get a sense of what it sounds like okay um, and this is what I did in the orchestra I'll just highlight this here. Okay, so there's a lot of stuff happening here. Um, so the first thing when you're orchestrating is who has the melody? Um, so I kind of went through every person in my mind, just listening, like, okay, what does that person sound like? This person, blah, blah, blah. Um, I knew that I wanted to divide the strings and, um, I had a, a good sense of, of what I wanted the page to look like and sound like. So it sort of eliminated a lot of people, you know, off the bat. I knew I didn't want any brass or anything like that. So I ended up here um, choosing an oboe. Um, this very well could have been cor anglais. Um, the reason I didn't use cor anglais is because I used it on the page before. And orchestration is all about sort of saving your colors and not just giving everything away all at once. Um, so that's why I ended up with the oboe. Um, if I gave it to the flute, it would have gotten buried. Um, and I needed the clarinets for figuration. Could have given it to the bassoons, definitely in a nice cantabile register. But I just kind of wanted that tartness um, just because it's kind of cool harmony. And I just thought it would be a nice color um, as a melody against the strings. So, um, what I ended up doing is some things were somewhat literal. Um, 
I took the figuration that was um, in the piano and I split it up between two clarinets. Now, Ravel played what he played because he had a limitation um, with his hands. Um, and I'm almost certain that, you know, if he had extra hands, that he would do the figuration, the sex tuple septuplets, maybe in thirds or fourths or whatever, or in octaves. So a lot of times when we see figuration um, in the piano, that's sort of an invitation to um, have things be in thirds or sixes or octaves. Um, and you also sometimes don't have to be literal with the figuration, like a septuplet, sep, yeah, septuplet. Um, you could also put a different a different tuplet underneath it because you're he wants blur. He's just trying to blur something. So I could have easily taken clarinet two and um, put a different figuration underneath it. So there's just a blur going up. So I ended up doing a dialogue between the clarinet and the two harps. I split it up between two harps um, because uh, I just liked the dialogue between the two of them um, and the harmony goes down chromatically. And um, I love harp, but boy, it's a nightmare when harmony's chromatic, working out pedal changes and all that stuff. Um, but I took harp lessons for a few months to really try and become intimate um, with the instrument. So um, we have the melody, so that's one thing. We've got a dialogue between the clarinet and the harps. That's another thing. And let me explain um, what I did with the strings which is basically I sort of gathered the harmony that was happening here, um, the important notes, and spread them throughout the strings. So this is what the strings are doing. So it's pretty lush. Um, and then lastly here, there's a little bit of a melody, and I chose to give that to uh, a solo cello. So with the strings, I divided them a lot. Um, when you divide, the, the more you divide the strings, it's like a natural way of reducing the dynamic. Um, so that's just kind of a, a general tip. Um, if you want something really quiet, divide them a lot. Um, and um, because this is, you know, a art song, <clears throat> this melody is already here being sung. So uh, I should have made it clear. I'm, I'm talking about um, orchestrating this passage here. So this melody is going on over it. I'm not going to play it because the playback sounds are just atrocious and you'll laugh. So that's where some people might stop. But with the way that I orchestrate and what I learned from Ravel is having just touches of color. Um, Ravel always talked about that, you know, real orchestration is like giving the effect of the piano pedals in the orchestra, that you're building a halo, like a mist around the sound. Um, he used to call it fluid sonore, um, you know, like sonorous fluid. It's like the music is like bathed in, in fluid. Um, so I'm always trying to keep that in my mind when I orchestrate to just have like a wet sound, a sustained sound, um, when it's appropriate. So, um, touches of color. Um, so I have a little bit of a tam-tam hit on the downbeat and that's sort of not only to sort of mark this section and set it off, um, but it also sort of makes it a little more mysterious. Um, a little tam-tam tip, which is just kind of, I don't know acoustically why this is, but when you hit the tam-tam, whatever it's enveloping, it sort of takes on the harmony, you know, the tam-tam sort of becomes the sound, but as the harmony changes, it can make the tam sound out of tune. I know that's weird. I'm doing it here, but you know, I don't mind it. Um, so that's a touch of color. Uh, the celesta here is a touch of color. Um, and um, 
these little flute gestures here are touches of color. And what I'm doing is I'm trying to put, I'm trying to bring your ear um, to these certain places when you get to the top um, of um, these little runs. So I can just solo these things together so you can understand what I'm talking about. So when you orchestrate, you know, my mentor kind of taught me you're you're sometimes you're a magician, you know, you're you're directing someone's ear, um, you're misdirecting people. Um, and so this is just a technique with the flute and the celesta to just guide your ear to the top of the run. <laughs> Um, and I don't think there's anything else to say in this page. Um, I've, the strings have, um, mutes on, um, so that takes some of the mid-range out of the sound. And I've marked them ex expressif et très soutenu, so, you know, expressive, very, like, sustained. Um, and, yeah. Um, and one other thing that's just a really, really small touch of color is there's a little crotale hit at the very end. Um, and I could have used a triangle, but I used it on the page before and I didn't want to over gild the lily. So this is insanely nerdy stuff, but this is how, you know, or some orchestrators think, you know, we think about every detail you know nothing on the page is just there you know um so i hope this is kind of helpful um i don't orchestrate like this for you know video game music or other stuff it's a, a very different um way of orchestrating um but with this kind of stuff this is like very refined and um I just like nerding out over this stuff. So anyways, I know this is a long video and um, if you've actually made it to the end, hell yeah, that's awesome. So yeah, I will talk to you guys later. Okay, bye.